mathematicians are lazy. And that is why we invent all kinds of notation to write things as shortly as possible. This notation is not meant to live, make life complicated. And it is also not meant to impress non-mathematical people. Although, I admit, this is a nice side effect. No, this notation is meant to make life easier for us. A good example is the indigo notation that we encounter in this web lecture. It will greatly help us to simplify long expressions with factors and matrices. Let us take a look in this web lecture at some first ideas. So what's the idea? We often have to write sums like s equals a1x1 plus a2x2 plus a3x3 up to anxn. Now we have already come up with a notation to write it a bit shorter using the sigma. So s equals sigma equals 1 to n xi ai. Or it doesn't matter of course how we call the summation index, so we can call it also say k. Now it's the same as k equals 1 to n and then xk a k. Now we can write this even shorter using what is called Einstein's summation convention. So what is the idea? If you have an expression in the index that occurs twice, we implicit uh, uh, mean with that that we have to sum over this index. So we can write this as equals uh, sum e i equals 1 to n xi ai just as ai xi. There you have an index that occurs twice, the i, so that implicitly means that we have to sum over it from 1 to n. So we kick out this summation symbol. And of course you can give this summation index another name, so that is equal therefore to akxk. So index occurring twice implicitly means we have to sum over it from 1 to n. Now in physics this n equals three usually. So in physics we often have that ai xi means index occurs twice, so if we, we have to sum over it from 1 to 3. So ai xi equals a1x1 plus a2x2 plus a3x3. So that's the idea of the summation convention. Now let us do a few examples. First go to uh, start with the in index notation and uh, write out what it means, and then we will go the other way around. An example one, for example, if we have AI AI, uh, we have an index I occurring twice, so we have to sum over it. So AI AI equals A1 A1 plus A2 A2 plus A3 A3, or A1 squared plus A2 squared plus A3 squared. Second example, now we have two indices occurring twice, both. So we have an AIJ XI XJ. So the i occurs in two places and the j occurs in two places. So we have to sum over i from 1 to 3 and we have to sum over j from 1 to 3. Let us do the summation over j first. So uh, our first term for j equals 1. We have an a i1 x i x1. So this comes over here. And then j equals 2. We have an a i2 x i x2. Comes over here. And then the j equals 3, a i3, x i x3 comes over here. Then we have done the summation over j. And those three terms all contain an i. So we have to sum all of them over i. So we get into to in total nine terms. Let us take a look at the first one first. So we have to sum over i from 1 to 3. So we get an a11 x1 x1. Then i equals 2 gives an a21 x2 x1, and i equals 3 gives an a31 x3 x1. So that's now we've written out the first term fully. Then the second term, i again has to be summed from 1 to 3. So we get for i equals 1, a12 x1 x2 over here. i equals 2 gives us a i22 x2 x2 over here, and i equals 3 gives us a a32 x3 x2 over there. End of the second term. And then the third one, uh, a13 uh, a for i equals 1, for i equals 2, and i equals 3 over there. So this very short expression over here 
AIJ XIJ is actually the same as this pretty lengthy expression of nine terms. So this index notation really allows us to write uh, long expressions, long sums, a lot shorter. This is the third example. Can we make it even worse? Ah, uh, yeah, of course we can take uh, three indices, i, j, and k. So something like this. Uh, a, i, j, k, x, i, x, j, x, k. We have to sum uh, i, j, and k from one to three. So we get a total mass of 27 terms. Feel free to write it down. I'm not going to do it because it becomes a big mass. Okay, now let's go the other way around. So starting with the sum and writing it using index notation. Uh, for example, example four here. So we have an A, I, C, I, uh, uh, an I sum from one to three, and a B, J, D, J, and J sum from one to three. Now the uh, A, I, and so on are just numbers, so you can alter the order. So you can uh, put these next to each other and those next to each other. And uh, then the AI and the CI do not feel the sum over J, they do not depend on J, so you can take them in front. So that's what's happen happening over here. So you have a sum uh, I equals 1 to 3 AI CI, can be written using the summation convention as AI CI, and you have a sum J equals 1 to G3 BJ DJ, and using the summation convention you can scratch the sum, can be written as BJ DJ. So this is how you can go from a notation with sums uh, to a notation without sums. And let us try to do that in example 5. Rewrite the sum over here. Well, the sum is perfectly legitimate. You can just sum i from 1 to 3 and you can sum j from 1 to 3. That, that part is fine. However, as you see, the i is occurring three times and the j is occurring one time, just only once. So it's only slightly different from example 4. However, in this case, you cannot use a summation convention because a summation convention only works if you are, uh, the, uh, the, the index you are summing over occurs exactly twice. So you cannot rewrite this first part with the i, you cannot rewrite the second part with the j, and you must, well, just have to leave it as it is. Fortunately, in many cases we will encounter, we will have summations uh, over indices that occur twice, so very often we indeed can use this summation convention.